All right, let's look at the basics of how to get a nano server running in a Hyper-V machine. So first of all, I need to create my nano server image and it's going to be a hard drive I'm going to create. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Windows Server 2016 disk and double click on this disk image and I can see there's this nano server directory. I want to copy that directory into another directory on my machine. So I take it and I copy it into the C colon stuff. So I drag it over there and then let's take a look at what's inside of it. So I go inside of this directory and you can see there is a nano server image generator directory and there's a packages and you can see all these packages right here. And we're going to want to install the Microsoft nano server IIS package. And we want to make sure it also has um, other things, but that's the package. Inside this nano server image generator, you can see there are some Windows PowerShell commands. So I want to start Windows PowerShell in administrator mode. To get it in administrator mode, just uh, type Windows PowerShell or PowerShell and then right click it and start as administrator or run as administrator. All right, in here, I want to run the scripts. And so I need to go into the directory. So C colon, it was stuff. And I can look around. I can see there's a nano server directory. So I go to nano server and I can go into the directory for the image generator. So nano server image generator. So I do a directory listing and I can see the files here. However, because these are PowerShell commands and they are not signed, I can't just run them. So I'm going to use a set execution policy to bypass. This will allow me to run them even though they are not signed. And you can change it back later if you want. But for now, I need to do that. And then I'm going to import a module. Or module and I'm going to use the nano server image generator so I import that module and I'm going to give it the verbose option so I can see it being imported once it's imported I can use the new nano server image command so I have a new dash nano server image and i want to create an image and i need to decide where it's going to be so i'm going to first decide that it is going to be a standard edition so i do edition standard i want to do a deployment type of guest and then I tell it the media path for where these files are so you can see it's, it's C colon stuff and so I'm going to use C colon stuff um, as my location so media path C colon slash stuff next I get to decide where I want to put my created image or hard drive image so I'll do a, a base path and this will put a little bit more than just the image, but you know, I'll put just C colon slash nano and then the actual hard drive image is going to be target path, target path. And I'll do C colon nano and I'm going to put this in as nano server dot v h d x v h d x so it's a virtual hard disk and the computer name computer name is going to be nano server and i'm going to give it the storage option so it can do the file sharing and stuff like that and then i want to install my package and if we remember the name of the package was microsoft dash 
nano oops, server dash IIS dash package. At this point, if I don't have any typing mistakes, uh, I should be able to press enter and it should build my package or actually ask me for a password. So I will put in a password that I can remember and then it will build my image and you'll sit there and do this for a little while and pop up some stuff. So we'll just skip ahead. All right, now it has finished generating the image. So you can see it's got all this information that's popped up and now I am ready to go ahead and use that image. So go ahead and shrink this out of the way and I can shrink this. Well, I can take a look at, let's take a look at the directory where it was created. So I can go instead of stuff, I will go back to changes to nano. And you can see this nano server hard disk image file. And then there's a WIM file and all this is all ready to go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to my Hyper-V and create a new virtual machine. So Hyper-V, I will create a new virtual machine and you can decide what you want to call it. I'm going to call mine my nano server. And then I decide, well, maybe I'll put it down in that nano directory. So I click next. Now, when you do your generation, you have to choose generation two. Otherwise it won't be able to boot the machine. It'll have hardware issues. So generation two, I click next. Um, you can increase your memory or keep it the same and just decide how much you want and click next. Uh, you can decide if you want to connect it to a network or not. Um, you can always change that later. Um, I'm just going to connect it to the default switch, which will give it an IP address that you can then look at. But you can create your own virtual machine, uh, virtual switches on Hyper-V and then manage that. All right, so when you get to this part, you want to choose an existing virtual hard disk. Now, remember, it's down in the nano directory, so nano and browse inside of there. You can see there is right here a nano server. I'm going to select that one. And then I will attach this nano server. And I go ahead and finish it. At which point it generates the nano server. The nano server is not running yet. And so I can go ahead and start the server. And then once it is started, I can go ahead and connect to the server, but then you have to remember information about the server, such as its IP address and, well, I guess the information to log into. So I'm going to go ahead and use my administrator, administrator, and then the password I use. And then I can get into this nano server and I can see some of the options. So if I look at networking, I can see, go in here and I can see information about what IP address it has. So mine is 172.28.170.52, which could be useful for later connecting to it. Um, I can go down to my inbound firewall rules and I can set up or manage firewall rules. So if I want to do Windows Remote Management, I can go in here and I can see it's enabled. Um, different actions there. I can press F4 on something to change it. So press F4 to change it, enabled or disabled. And to can go now down to uh, Win RM. So if you want Remote Management, you can go press Enter here and you can confirm Enter again and then enter again and it will have that turned on so you can see how you can do some basic configuration things here and then you go ahead and exit out here and close that so i hope this helps you get an idea of how to get started actually getting a nano server up on hyper v after that you then need to connect to it and do 
communication through it and you can do that through your um, PowerShell session command so you can enter a PowerShell session and connect to it and do configuration. Anyway, there you go.